open almost any social media app, and as you thumb through photos and videos of modern-day supercars, you will inevitably see an attractive blonde woman behind the wheel. Odds are, that supercar blondie, a celebrity car blogger who in only a few short years has become an overnight automobile sensation, creating her own vehicle media empire, which between Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube has gained her nearly 100 million followers. Supercar Blondie is regularly seen getting cozy with the world's most exotic multi-million dollar super vehicles. From, say, a $5 million Bugatti Mistral Roadster to a Lamborghini Rivalto hypercar. Or even marveling at some of the rarest classic cars in the world. It seems that there's not a day that goes by that this car fan isn't getting to be a kid in an automotive candy store watched daily by more people than there are in New York, Los Angeles, Miami, Canada, and Spain combined. But what exactly made Supercar Blondie famous? Is it her access to the cars? Dumb luck? Or is she a meticulously crafted genius whose every detail is so carefully calculated that you're unaware of how she's reaching into your psyche? Get ready as we pull back the curtain on one of the most public and private car lovers that you will ever meet. Alexandra Darvel was born September 21st, 1985, in a small country town near Brisbane, Australia. As a little girl, she was never into engines. In fact, watch her content today and you'll see that not much has changed. But her father and older brother Jay used to work under the hoods while little Alex would ride her bike around the driveway. Over time, seeing the love that her father and brother had for old vehicles, she began to appreciate the outside of a car. The sleek, clean lines, attractive cosmetic appearances, and cool interior gadgets. During her childhood, she never saw a luxury vehicle in her small town, and she didn't have internet. But when she moved into Brisbane proper for high school, she noticed that the world was so much bigger than she realized. She saw a stretch limo pass by, followed by a Bentley Continental GT, and she thought, nice car, but I'll never be lucky enough to drive one. At 15, she got her first car, a Mitsubishi Lancer, a clunky rust bucket that her brother handed down to her. She loved the freedom and independence that a car brought, and it was a chance to explore. She finally left Australia when she went to Switzerland as part of a high school student exchange program. There, she met a boy named Nick Hershey. She was 17 and he was 19, and part of the family that was hosting her on the exchange program. Soon after, they started dating, and when she finally had to fly back to Australia, Nick went with her and they attended Queensland University of Technology together. She studied journalism and he studied business. Immediately after graduating from university, Alex took a job doing TV presenting in Singapore. She loved it and was naturally comfortable on camera. However, that was cut short when her boyfriend landed his first banking job in Dubai. For Alex, the decision was either move with him to Dubai or say goodbye and stay close to home and family. Soon after, they married, and she left for her new home country in the United Arab Emirates, a journey that would set her on a ride of becoming the internet's most famous car blogger. First, Alex hated Dubai. The city is predominantly Muslim and it was a culture shock for a small town girl from Australia. Besides her husband, she knew no one. And she missed home, especially her younger sister Kate, who was her best friend growing up. Add to that the general cultural differences between men and women in the Middle East, such as she wasn't allowed to wear clothes that exposed her shoulders and knees, and she didn't have much in common with many of the women in Dubai. But as luck would have it, she eventually landed her first job as a newsreader and presenter at a radio station, the Dubai I 103.8, where she participated on a radio talk show interviewing celebrities. At the station, everyone had DJ handles, so she decided to call herself Radio Blondie pointing out the obvious fact that her hair made her stand out. She interviewed celebrities and started to find comfort in media and wealthy circles. The UAE is the third richest country in the world because of its diverse economy that is supported by the oil, technology, trade, transportation, tourism, and financial sectors. As a result, Dubai is known for its extreme wealth. It's so wealthy that there's a joke that the poor people drive Rolls Royces. So for all these years, Alex was surrounded by the finest cars money could buy, 
and in some cases so luxurious and so rare that money alone can't buy it. During her five years on the radio, Alex would sometimes cover live events, and she would always choose anything car-related, recalling her early days hanging with her father and brother while they worked on engines. She made appearances at car shows, test tracks, and other general car press announcements. As much as she enjoyed these things, the male-dominated car culture always made her feel on the outside. As a result, she was constantly objectified by men who saw her as a Barbie doll and not a serious journalist. At first, Alex didn't mind. An attractive Australian woman in Dubai who was media savvy, comfortable around wealth, and could hold her own with the men worked to her benefit. But eventually, the subtle and not so subtle lack of respect started to get the better of her. She would suffer in silence for many years from the derogatory marks thrown her way because she was a woman, and with no close family or friends to turn to, she told no one, eventually seeing a therapist. But as difficult as it was, something good would one day come out of hanging around male-dominated car events, and it would change her life. One day, an executive working at Bentley asked her if she wanted to borrow one of their cars for the weekend. He hoped she might talk about it on her radio show the following week. Alex had never driven one before and agreed to take it for a spin. So she borrowed a brand new Bentley Flying Spur, around $250,000, and took it on the road for the weekend. And she loved it. But even more importantly, it gave her an idea. If Bentley would loan her a car to review, would Ferrari? Would McLaren? She decided to call many of these car makers in the Dubai area, and surprisingly, they obliged. And that's where fate stepped in. Like many people on social media, they document the good things in their life. A fancy vacation, an exotic meal, and of course, driving an expensive car. Alex put on her TV face and spent the weekend filming and talking about the McLaren 650S on her Instagram profile. At the time, she only had 300 followers, but after that McLaren social media post, she suddenly gained zero followers. However, she still kept on posting her cool car videos on social media. It wasn't that she was trying to go viral, but she wasn't trying not to go viral either. Nothing really caught on until one day, either by luck or by skill, a video struck gold. She watched and re-watched her one viral video and asked herself, what makes it so unique? Was it the Ferrari? Was it dumb luck? The answer she decided, was that in addition to being the car, it was also really about the fact that she had put down her TV persona guard and had just been raw. After that, she continued filming herself with no script, just her natural bubbly self, and posted them on Instagram. She also decided to start taking her social media very seriously. She later said, I felt like I had two jobs, one full-time radio show and the other uploading car content to my social media feeds. Over time, her 300 followers became 50,000. And that's when she started getting approached by car brands. So in a big leap of faith, she quit her day job at the radio station and changed her media name from Radio Blondie to Supercar Blondie. As Supercar Blondie's social media fans grew, she started getting regularly approached to showcase cars on her Instagram page, and the car brands that approached her kept getting more and more valuable, from luxury vehicles to supercars such as the Porsche 918 Spyder, and then even higher and faster vehicles, the hypercars, which include cars like the McLaren F1 or the Bugatti Veyron. She took videos of herself showing off all the cool features, and she even started getting asked to showcase concept cars as a way to gauge public interest in vehicles. Over these four years as a full-time car blogger, she took painstaking efforts to make her videos look fun and effortless, when in reality, she needed a full private tutorial on how each car works right before cameras roll. But it's paid off by making her one of the most recognizable faces in automobile social media. But being a public figure also is an invitation to be a target of internet trolls. Being an attractive woman driving a Ferrari 599 GTZ Zagato can be a double-edged sword. When she started to gain popularity, she was brutalized by negative comments, people calling her stupid and accusing her of sleeping her way up. Life got better when she stopped reading the comments. Still, if you ask people what they love most about Supercar Blondie, they'll tell you they love seeing the cars. But others will tell you it's about something more. It's the girl next door approach to cars. Fans want her to talk about the engines, but Supercar Blondie is the first to tell you that she likes to take a cosmetic approach to the cars. And the public agrees. 
As more and more brands handed her the keys to high-end cars, she would just appreciate their look and feel and features and interiors and people connected to it. She didn't need to be a gearhead. She needed to be a fan of high-end luxury supercars, a calculated risk that has paid off in the world of car aficionados who can smell when she doesn't know what she's talking about. She realized that it wasn't about what she said, as people watch social media on their phones on mute a lot of times. It was just beautiful cars with beautiful visuals and a beautiful woman. And that simple secret to success gets her millions of views daily. And she leans into all the latest advancements in car engineering, designs, and technology. With a recent shift towards electronic vehicles, she is the first call a brand makes when they want to announce a new electric model. And there are many modern hypercars that have gone electric, such as the Pininfarina Batista, the NIO EP9, Remac Nevera, and Lotus Aviha. What started as a one-person operation has now become a full-fledged media empire with dozens of employees and her own building with her name on it. And she finally brought her family into the act. Her husband Nick is her photographer and business manager, and even her sister Kate moved to Dubai to work for the infamous Supercar Blondie Empire. In 2018, Arabian Business listed her as one of the 50 most influential women in the Arab world, and it nominated her in 2019 as one of the top 30 most influential women in the Arab world. Also in March 2018, Esquire Magazine Middle East named her Influencer of the Year. Between Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, she has 100 million followers, and she is approached by brands with million-dollar offers for exposure. Today, she's estimated to be worth $17 million. She doesn't own all the cars she features, of course, but she's become quite a car collector herself. Today, she only has a Lamborghini Huracan, Rolls-Royce Wrath Black Badge, Tesla Cybertruck, a McLaren 720S, and a few more. Supercar Blondie's success has led her to become a prominent figure in the automobile industry, and she's become a role model for young women who aspire to pursue their passion for cars. And recently, Hollywood started calling, with offers to appear on TV shows, including the BBC show Top Gear. Who knows? Maybe one day Supercar Blondie will design her own car and become Hypercar Blondie. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more stories about cars you love. And if you want to see another woman who rocked out the automotive world, check out this amazing story on the first lady of drag racing, Shirley Muldowney, who defied the odds with her incredible spunk and spirit. I'll see you in the next one.